I don't understand. I don't want to know if you creep in. Why are you now closed? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our. That was a weird way for me to start. Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gaming things. Exactly. We are here today with a video that was actually a suggestion in our comments of some of our top 50 videos. Mm -hmm. And that was some people were curious what games fell off of your top 50 this year? Like just poof, off completely. Where did they go? Nobody knows. Somewhere down the list, apparently. So we went through our top 50s from last year to see what games fell off. And I figured we'd just chat about that a little bit. Let's do it. Jaffe, I think we both have a nice handful. Quick disclaimer, all of these games are very good. This is not us yeah. slagging games off or negative connotations. So just because something fell off our top 50 does not make it a bad game because I know some people will interpret it that way. These are all incredible games. Even if something's like a number 600 from 700, it's probably still a good game. Yeah, all the games we play are good. <laughs> well, that's not true. But most of the most games of the we games play, play are good. most games are, are objectively good. good. That's our opinion. Most okay. games are objectively good. Yeah, deal with it. But maybe we'll start with like the highest ones that dropped off or like the low, like Lowest to highest. Lowest to highest. So lowest as in lowest, like... Ranked. Ranked last year. Yes. So the first game that fell off of my top 50 this year was Scythe from Stonemaier Games. Um, and I think that this is just... I, I'm pretty sure you talk about Scythe on your top 50. For me, this one has just fallen off because it's just the way the times go. You know, we love Scythe, still love it. But it's just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Someone actually made a really, really good point mm -hmm. in our comments. And to give context, even like top 50 of all the games we've ranked mm -hmm. is like 5% yeah. of our games. Yeah. Like that's a really elite level of a percentile. It's elite. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, like I, I just want to make sure people understand that context because like some people will be like, why is that outside your top 50? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, we have played a lot of games. A lot of games. And it's really, like, a very small percentile of games is going to make it in the top 50. Yeah. And if you're curious, I will, you have, like, your whole list there, right? Mm -hmm. So Scythe ended up at number 62 for me. Mm -hmm. So it's still within the top 100. And I think that that, like, you mentioned it in one of the videos, like, anything within the top 100 it's a really good game. It's a really good game. Even yeah. anything within the top like 300, we consider yeah, a good still, game. It's still top 50 percentile. Because we ranked like almost 800 games yeah. each. So anyways, Scythe is the first one that fell off of my list. Planet Unknown this year was 115th. Uh, so it was 48 last year. Mm -hmm. um, I think Planet Unknown fell off because I've just identified that Polyomino games, I just don't really... Yeah. As I've explored more in the hobby and find and find new mechanisms and new types of games that I enjoy, uh, it's refined down what I don't also enjoy a ton of. Yeah. Um, Polyomino being one of those things. Um, and Wild Tild West came out, and I think I prefer Wild Tild West to yeah. Planet Unknown. We've played a fair amount of Planet Unknown in this point. It's still a really good game. It's still 115, but um, I, I just think Polyominoes are going to have a really, really hard time. Yeah. Uh, cracking cracking that list for me. We were riding high last year on Planet Unknown because mm -hmm. we played it like end of the year, yeah. right? The next game that fell off of my list, it was 45 last year. This year, it was 65. That is Ugly Griffin in. So a lot of the Button Shy games fell off of my list this year. And I just think it's because the nature of the games, you know, like we just played so many games and I really love the button shy games, but sometimes it's really hard for me to like yeah. rank them against something like Kanban. Like how do you how do you do that? Yeah, I think I don't even know. I think that uh invokes a really interesting conversation that maybe we can just briefly have here and sure. how difficult it is to rank things. Yeah. Because how do you rank a eighteen card game like Ugly Griffin in with two Kanban? 
Yeah. You know, like we have our own criteria, uh, which we won't get into here, which is a part of our top 50. You can go yeah. check that out. But yeah, it's really, really difficult to rank games. Like how do you rank a party game versus, you know, a game like Twilight Struggle? Yeah. Like it, all of these lists, everyone's lists are subjective. It really mm -hmm. doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it is, it's challenging. Yeah. I think some people take their rankings really seriously mm -hmm. as well, whereas like we're a little bit more loosey-goosey yeah. with it. Like we rank in the moment based on our gut feeling. Yeah. And that's just how the chips fall sometimes. Mm -hmm. yep. Next up for me was 45 last year, and this year is 80. Uh, and that is Niroshima Hex. Mm -hmm. um, it's still top 100. Niroshima Hex is still a game I absolutely love. Again, just a product of maybe not playing it quite enough. We've played it a few times last year. Mm -hmm. um, and one, I just want to explore more of the factions. We have pretty much every faction, I think, that exists for Niroshima Hex. And it's one that I want to just play with other people and introduce to more people. Yeah. This is a very, very good, two, in my opinion, two-player game. We haven't played it at anything higher than that. Mm -mm. But just one that, uh, you know, a lot of these is going to get, you're going to hear similar conversations because they are just floating in this ever-evolving list. Like, yeah. there's no specific reason. These are all really, really great games. Mm -hmm. But just uh, by the nature of what and how many games we play... It's going to happen. Yeah. The next one for me was number 43 last year, uh, and that is Overboss, which I'm sure was insanely high the year before. It was my number two in 2022. Then it was my number 43 in 2023. And now I wonder where it fell. Hold, please. 95. Listen, I still have a huge love in my heart for Overboss. I just think that it's it's a it's a very cozy game. We've played a lot of We've it. We've played so much Overboss, and it's one of the games that we got super into when we first started within our content creation side of board gaming mm -hmm. um, and played it all the time, and now it just doesn't really hit the table. Although I will say that this is a game that if somebody was just like, what do you want to play? This is still one of those games that will automatically be like, oh, we can play Overboss this because is a, I just know it so well. This is a game I would introduce to people mm -hmm. uh, very, very frequently. Next up for me was 41 last year, and this year is 136, and that is Innovation. Um, Innovation is a game that I played to death to the point where I like started to get a little bit kind of over it. Mm -hmm. Uh, because innovation is complete random chaos. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's one that's kind of a product of me developing, like, I like to have control a little bit more than I think I realized. Yeah. Um, and the struggle with innovation is, like, you can have a really awesome synergy going, and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I'm going to run away with this game, and someone just blows you up. <laughs> Which is and, part of the fun. And it is part of the fun, but it is also equally frustrating. I think also innovation, I was playing, like, too much, mm -hmm. constantly replaying innovation. And in some games I can do that with, like Root, because every game is somewhat different, but innovation started to feel really samey. I haven't played any expansions or anything. But again, like still 136, like you're still in the upper threshold there for sure. Yeah. Uh, so the next one for me is another button shy, which was 42 last year, and that's Food Chain Island. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I would say that Food Chain Island has just gotten bumped for me in solo button shy by numpsters yeah <laughs> because like if i'm reaching for one now i'm typically reaching for numpsters uh it dropped so far like so surprising it's at 94 this year but i freaking love that game still it is like it's probably the number one button shy game that i recommend to people who are just getting into like solo button shy i'm like you got to get food chain island because it's amazing mm -hmm. so my number 40 last year is a game called quantum mm -hmm. this year it was 57 so it didn't drop a ton. Uh, I still love Quantum a lot. Uh, we were lucky enough to get a copy of Quantum yeah. uh, in the last couple of years. It's very difficult to find. I have nothing to say about Quantum. I still love this game. It's just outside my top 50. Uh, it is on BGA. I've played it on BGA. Uh, I've we played streamed the it this year. physical copy. Uh, it's very chessy, space-themed game uh, that I 
still a door. My next one that fell off is number 41. It's funny because I have like a stream that fell off uh, and that is Boomerang Australia. So I think when we did our rankings last year, Boomerang Australia, which by the way, I, I wonder where it fell, but I still love, it was like almost a replacement of Silver Bullet yeah. for us where it's like, what do we want? let's just play Boomerang Australia because we freaking love it. 134. That's shocking to me. <laughs> I feel like it should be higher. It's just because it's the type of game. It's just a simple little flip and write, but it's so much fun. Like I, it if anybody good. wants to play this with me on BGA, I'm always down to play. But it was it's on BGA. It's on BGA. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's just like it's a very cash, yeah. very cash game. It and there's is. not really much to it, but it's it's I really like it. But it mm -hmm. has fallen for me. My number thirty nine last year is now two sixty six. Not surprising though. Uh, not surprising though, no. and that is Android Netrunner. <gasps> um, I had a very very strong uh, infatuation with Android Netrunner uh, mm -hmm. in the past two years, mainly around the fact that it felt Magic adjacent. Um, it was a C or is a CCG. Um, I have a ton of Android Netrunner content. I've bought so a ton of expansions. It's a game that I I want to play more of, but it's really difficult to get those lifestyle game play, those games played now. Mm -hmm. And this is one that I think is a product of that. It's just oozing with theme in the rule book, which I actually think is detrimental to the user experience of board games. Yeah. But that's a whole other topic. Uh, Android Netrunner is one that I. I would probably increase if I played it a bunch more. And I just don't know what environment I'm going to get to play this enough to give it the justification that it deserves. Fair. Okay, so my next one was my number 40. So my number 40, 41, 42, 43 all fell off my list. Uh, and that was Azul. Listen, Azul is an amazing game. We all know this, but like... As the years go on, it's just, it loses a little bit of its luster, but I still think it's a brilliant design. Mm -hmm. I still think that, like, I'm almost always in a game of it on BGA, but this used to be a game that saw our table constantly, and now we, like, never pull it out physically, mm -hmm. but I'm always in a game of it on BGA. I'm mm -hmm. in one right now. Um, anyways, it fell way down. Uh, it's at number 115. It's not that far back. I know, but, like, I feel like it's, it's constantly dropping, mm. which is kind of sad to see. But uh, Next one up uh, was 37 last year, and this year is 62, mm -hmm. so still in my top 100, and that is Black Angel. Um, Black Angel would probably be in my top 50 if we owned it and we could play it more. Mm -hmm. um, it is somewhat hard to find around here. It's a game I would buy if I saw it on the shelf somewhere. Definitely. It's not one I'm going to order. It's not one I'm looking like that. Uh, heavily for but i very 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 much enjoy black angel uh, i love the theme i love the mechanisms that are in the game um i think again if i, if I had owned it and we played it more it probably would be still in my top 50 we just haven't played it in a while what is it, the spiritual successor to um twa Twa. The next one that fell off my list is also my number 37 and that was anachrony uh just i think by the sheer fact that we didn't physically get it to the table this year. And I played it once on BGA and did not remember what was going on. Yeah. I hate playing big games like that on BGA, when I, especially when I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm better at clicking around and not caring than you. Yeah, I'm not. I like to care about care about it. 71. Mm -hmm. so it's still in my top 100 because I did like, I remember our first play of that it's game. It's such a good game, yeah. I was like... Whoa, I did not think I was going to like this. Yeah, we should play that one with Nick when he comes to visit. Yeah, I'm trying to paint it before he gets here. That's what I'm painting right uh, now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nick from the Brothers Murph is coming to visit us. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. We're going to play 7,500 million games. It's going to be great. Uh, last year, this game was 36 on my list. This year, it is 71. And that is Dice Throne. Um, listen, <laughs> I absolutely love Dice Throne. Jamie beating me in the tournament. <laughs> Oh, really please. impacted this. No, it didn't. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I do love Dice Throne. I absolutely love Dice Throne. I will always pull Dice Throne out when I just want like a... I don't want to think about something. I just want to play a game and have chuck fun. some dice and mm -hmm. have some fun. Uh, I think Dice Throne has a perfect niche in this hobby. And it is incredible in within that niche of what it does. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so excited to see the continued characters. This is one that will always be in my top 100. It might even crack my top 50. I will mention, I'm not a huge Marvel fan. I do like X-Men though. So the expansion stuff I'm definitely That's interested true. in. Uh, 
I think it's cool no matter what they do. I just like seeing the new art and the new mechanisms and stuff. But if they were, I, I, I think they've recently announced they're going back to some of their OG stuff, which I'm really excited for. But Dice Throne is just one that I think it's going to continue to float around these spaces for me. I love Dice Throne. But I also love Marvel. So like all the Marvel sets, I've also been super jealous. I really about. liked, I like some Marvel, like Deadpool. Yeah, all day. Mm-hmm. Um, X-Men, like I mentioned. But like Thor, Thor, yeah, Thor and Spider Man. Like he's just bitter on Spider Man because of how, <laughs> how annoying he is to play against. Yeah, he's so much fun to play though. My next one was number thirty six last year, and that is Downforce. Mm. Now this, I still love Downforce, but I will obviously say with all of the new racing games that came out, like Heat, <laughs> Pedal to the Metal, uh, Thunder Road Vendetta, it's just. It bumped Downforce off of my list. That's fair. Um, which I think is fair. Like, even on BGA now, I used to always be in Downforce, and now I'm always in Heat. Heat, yeah. You know what I mean? Heat Heat was... Uh... Yeah. Heat's a, heat's a game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Downforce is now number 101 on my list. It's just like, I don't know. This game still... We played this so early on, and we really loved it when we first played it, and I still love it, and I always want to play I it. I still really like Downforce. I do, too. It's it's great. So, anyways, it just, it's They fallen. are different enough, too, that I think they They're can They're different coexist. enough. I think the other issue is that, like, Downforce, you really do need a lot more people. You whereas, do, like, yeah. Heat, it's best at, like, six. With Heat, you can play lower player counts because the AI mm-hmm. uh, is really good it's in really that good game. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so that's Downforce. It's a really good point, Jamie. Yeah. Last year, this was 35, and this year it is 112, uh, and that is Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. I'm not going to say anything much about this one. It's just, no. you played it, it's done, it's still an incredible game, it's a campaign game, yeah. I've gone through it, I've completed it, it's still 112, I still have really fond memories of that game and that experience, um, and I think it's the highest of the Gloomhavens for me. It pro- yeah, I would, um, I would have not it. played Frosthaven yet, but Frosthaven might supersede this one. But I really, I wish they would have done Frosthaven like they did Jots of the Line with mm-hmm. the book and everything. Oh my yeah. God, it just made it so much better to table. Same. So my next one was my number 31, another racing game, which is Flam Rouge, which I still love. Um, this one dropped down to number 106, which I think is wrong. I think it's wrong. Honestly, I think it should be higher because I really do like this game and like the mechanics and stuff. But I don't know. I haven't like thoroughly gone through the list. I just trusted Pub Meeple to not do me dirty. <laughs> but anyways, um, Flammer is another racing game, which which we love. But mm-hmm. it's just, yeah, I guess it doesn't see the table. It also doesn't play great at two. You want to play it at more players. Yeah. But anyways, that's Flammer Rouge. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, this one was 27. This year it is 87, um, and that is Return to Dark Tower. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last year, uh, we actually got a chance to play Return to Dark Tower, Mm -hmm. and this one would be in my top 50 if we'd played it more. Um, This is a me game. This is such a me game. It's got this awesome toy factor in the middle, this massive tower that spits skulls out. Maybe we should play that with Nick when he's here. Yep. Um, (laughs) And it's a cooperative kind of... Uh, scenario based game where you're kind of going around this map and you're fighting baddies and you're trying to complete objectives. Mm -hmm. This is a hundred percent top 50 game for me. If I had a chance to play it more, I just have only played it once. Yeah. Um, and I think last year when I had ranked it that high, it was coming off of that riding riding a high. Um, but again, caveat that with this game 100 percent is going to float around this 50 if i sure. uh, play it more so my next one that fell off the list is camel up it was number 29 last year it's number 100 this year which is another one i think is wrong that needs to be higher i agree actually that should be way 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 higher for me it should be i have it higher than you yeah it and i love this game like this is one of like i will say still say this is one of my favorite games of all time so i do think Pub Meeple did me wrong. I think Camel Up should be within, maybe not top 50 anymore, but for sure within like top 70. I have it at 84. Mm-hmm. It should be in my top which 70. Which I think is pretty right for Camel me. Camel Up is freaking amazing. It deserves better than this. Mm. It deserves so much better. 24 last year, uh, 55 this year. So just outside my top 50, and that is Unmatched. I'm not going to say anything. I still love Unmatched. It's incredible. Uh, this is just a product of uh, other games. 
getting bumped up unmatched is amazing. My number 21 last year that got bumped off was Brass Birmingham, which uh, landed for me at number 103. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, and <clears throat> I think, honestly, we just had a less fun play of it this year that bumped it down for me. And I'm just like, it's also like every time you play, it, you have to totally relearn it. Like, so, and not just like refresh, it's like relearn mm -hmm. <laughs> every time we play. And so it just, yeah, hinders it for me just a little bit. It's still a great game though. Yeah. Last year, number 22. This year, number 54. Uh, and that is The Godfather. Again, incredible game. Uh, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Just slipped down because of other games. We haven't played it in a while, but it is a incredible area control game. Yeah. Last year, my number 11 was Scout. And that fell off of my list. And it's now 131. Wow. It's, we don't pull it out anymore. It's not our chosen it, it card got, game anymore. It got. It's not the chosen one. It anymore. got. It got pulled by Nana. <laughs> it did. And sea salt and paper. It did. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's a big part of it. I still think Scout is awesome, super fun, fantastic convention game, fantastic like palate cleanser kind of game. I love it. But like the high that I was riding, I was last year apparently riding lots of highs on games, but like it dropped, and I didn't replace it in my top fifty with nana or another game like that just because these games do have a tendency to it was in my top 50 yeah well yeah it was jeff it was wasn't it number 21 uh last year number 73 this year is fantasy realms uh fantasy realms was a per, i was a, a victim of a game called sea salt and paper coming out and other uh small box card games like nana mm -hmm. uh, fantasy realms was one that we always used to pull out f that filled that void um and i still love fantasy realms i'll play it anytime but it's not one we tend to carry around with us anymore like we used to um so it was in my top 50 yeah whatever shut up <laughs> the last one on my list uh was number nine last year it was fuji flush which mm -hmm. is 115 this year which i also think that can't be right that can't be right because I love this game, but this game is so situational. Group dependent for sure. Group dependent and convention dependent. We don't play this unless we're at a convention. You will have an amazing time playing Fuji Flush with yes, us. Yes, you um, will. That's a but I've seen guarantee. some people playing Fuji Flush. Uh, no one I know, but I've seen people playing Fuji Flush and there's like no cheering, there's no yelling, there's, there's no nothing. There's and I'm no like, pizzazz. that's not how you play Fuji Flush. You're gonna yeah. have a terrible time. Yeah. But I do think that this should be higher than 115 because, like, we freaking love this game. It's in your... 208. <gasps> yeah. That feels wrong. That does feel wrong. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know, Pub Meeple. I don't know, man. My number 17 last year and my number 99 this year is Dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, again, product of not getting played. Dice Tower West the last time we played it. Yeah, I last played at Dice Tower West and had a really great experience playing that game. I do own it, just haven't played it. Uh, maybe it's something we can play when it comes, but yeah. uh, I very much enjoy Dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, I'm sure it would go up uh, with repeated plays, but just yeah. didn't get to the table. So those are some games, actually all of the games that have fallen off of our top 50. Our top 50 is like a living, breathing thing that changes every day, by the day, by the minute. And it might be right and it might be wrong and we don't know. Oh, it's right because it's objective. Mm -hmm. We're curious if there's any surprises from that list. Let us know down in the comments. But with that being said, that's everything that we have for today. So if you're interested in buying board games like any of the many that we mentioned today that fell from grace, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Heck yeah, do you like snacks? I do. Perfect, where people get snacks. Munch pack. That's right. And if you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye! There it is. Got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Up ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Well, just remember what your old pal said. You've got a friend in me. I don't want to do that. Oh, we, we'll just do monthly. Ugh, pay $33. I'm going to go check on Juno while you're fucking around. Do you need anything? Next for you. <laughs> Oof. I'm curious where this landed. I just need to, I just got distracted. I looked over at Jeff's laptop. You have like 75 tabs open. Yeah. Welcome to my job. <laughs> <laughs>
that's wild. I was like, whoa. Do you know how, and do you know what's funny? Do you use all of I them? I use every single one of them. Crazy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to burp. Um, 